Hello. Welcome to today's tutorial video, where I will show you the rendering process for ArchLine XP version 2023. ArchLine 2023 comes with a new rendering engine, so when rendering, it's advisable to follow the steps described in the tutorial, along with the proven processes. Let's look at the steps required to do this. The first step is to check the position of the sun. It's best to start with a daytime scene. The sun should be up on the horizon, between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. This can be done in the view, sun, sun position. First, I set the date for October 25th and leave the time at 1 p.m. Then I use the shadow simulation to see how much light comes in. I adjust the time slightly by 20 minutes to make sure enough light enters the model. I accept with OK and we can move on. If there are artificial lights in the project, it's worth to take a render image with both way, lights on and off, and choose the one you like. I'm going to create an image with the lights on. The next step is to set the viewpoint. I can set the view by clicking on the I button, and add more by clicking on the plus button. It is very important that the height of the camera and the height of the target are set to nearly the same value. As we have learned in previous workshops, this is between 1.1 meter and 1.4 meter. For now, I'm keeping the 1.3 meter setting. I can rename the view by double clicking on the name, so it should be rendering. I accept with OK. The 2023 program version monitors the position of the viewpoint, and in case it falls inside a wall, the program warns us before starting the render. Once I'm done with these settings, we can proceed as we learned in the previous workshops. We create the renders in three phases. In the first phase we work on the architectural elements, in phase two on the larger furniture, and in the third phase on the decorative elements. We apply the render styles to an element and then fine-tune the materials. I have already made these adjustments, so I will move on to the next step. I'm going to run a test render to see if all the materials are set up correctly. If not, we will fine tune them. I start the render from the usual place. I start a standalone rendering with a resolution of 800 by 600. Render presets have been updated. Let's see how. The real time preview render has been kept, but three new render presets have been added. Q1 is a fast, preliminary image recommended for use at the beginning of the rendering process. A test render with a low resolution will quickly produce a working quality image. Q2 is a cleaner, higher quality image. This is the next step in the render process, to scenes that are close to the final image, at a medium resolution, such as 1280 by 720 pixels. The last one is QX, a customizable setting, with individually adjustable values based on the number of light sources and the complexity of the model. With the default setting of 10 samples per pixel and 30 render pass count, it is suitable for the final image at full HD or higher resolution. I'll tell you more about these settings when we get to the final image. Let's get back to the test render, which I'll do with the Q1 fast sunlighting only image render preset. I'm going to select clear daylight. For the date and time, you can see the setting that was given at the beginning of the video. And for the background, I'm going to select a panorama image and then start rendering. Rendering time will be very short with these settings, 1 to 2 minutes at most. If it takes longer to render, it can be stopped at any time, but I'll wait for that. We'll see what else is new with the render engine. Rendering is complete. At the end or interruption of rendering, the denoiser module denoises the entire scene. We have just seen this here. You have to wait for this to happen, and then you get a more accurate picture of what the materials will look like. This way we can check the quality of the materials and decide whether to fine tune them or not. I will make some adjustments, I will give the window glass a little more reflection, darken the carpet, and adjust the render style of the mirror. It is also very important that if there is a problem with the reflection of the glass, you should apply the glass render style to the surface before rendering. In version 2023, the mirror rendering setting is a bit different, in order for the reflection to work in all cases, the mirror render style must be applied to the surface. These are what I will do now. I'm not going to save that now, 
I'm going to exit and look at the settings. In the window, I use a material search to display the material and fine tune its properties. I set its transparency to 88 and its reflection to 31%. I set the albedo of the carpet to 40. I finish with the mirror. From the design center, I drag the mirror render style onto the surface. After these, we can move on to the next step. This will be another test render, where I'll set the resolution of the image a bit higher, to 1280 by 720 and use the Q2 render preset. I will not change any other settings. The render time will now be about 2 to 3 times longer than before, but it depends on the scene. Once we are satisfied with this render, we can start the full HD final render. So, I'm going to start it and let's see the result and the changes. The rendering was done, it took 8 minutes 52 seconds. You can see that the mirror is now reflective, the reflection of glass is also good, and carpet is now the right shade. So, all our material settings are correct, and we can now launch the final high resolution render. So, I choose the standalone rendering. I set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and choose the QX custom setting. This could take up to 60 minutes. It depends on the computer, the scene, and resolution. The higher resolution will obviously increase render time, but since this will be the final image, it's worth the time. As I mentioned before, the QX render preset allows custom settings. So, we can set the samples per pixel, which is the number of ray tracing samples computed per pixel of the output image. This adjusts anti-aliasing, which will smooth away the jaggies you see along the edges of objects and shadows. Increasing the number of pixel samples will result in a cleaner, higher quality image. We recommend that for the final render, or where complex lighting is involved, you choose a value higher or equal to 10, and where you need a quick draft you can choose a value lower than 5. So, I'm going to keep this 10 for now. Next is the render pass count. The rendering engine uses a progressive rendering method, which further refines the generated image during each rendering pass. Increasing the render pass number will increase the time required to perform rendering, but will also increase the image's quality per each single pass. The required number of passes is highly dependent on the kind of scene that is being rendered. The higher sampling settings, which is greater than 10, useful for scenes with complex lighting, recommended value is 30, which will be used for the final render. The lower sample settings, which is less than 10, is recommended for drafts and quick views, and it can be useful for scenes that require detailed geometry, fine textures without complex lighting. So, I start it with the default settings, and then see what the final image will look like. The render image is ready. At this point, it is worth adjusting the effects. All professionals, whatever rendering software they use, will do some post-processing at the end of the process, refining the images with an image editor such as Photoshop. Adjusting brightness, contrast, saturation, white balance almost always improves the quality of the image, for example by making it warmer. In the render dialog, you can find post-processing tools in the effects tab. No external image editor is required. You don't need to make big changes, but a 5 to 10% change can make a big difference to the scene. Always set the exposure first to add a little light to the image. Then I'll adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation. Not too much, I just want to get a slightly warmer effect. Shadows, midtones, and highlights always affect a specific section of the scene. Shadows will change the darker parts. Midtones will darken or lighten the midtones. The highlights will lighten the lightest tones. 
If a setting is not correct, you can double-click to reset the default values. Finally, you can use the white balance to set the scene to a cool or warm shade. Let's see how it looks and then reset it to default. Once everything is set, there is one more switch to try, which you will find here in the Details tab. This is the Sharper Details. Reduces noise to get sharper details in the rendered image. Removes image noise while recovering and enhancing detail. Now we see it's on, and if we turn it off, we'll get a completely different effect. We'll have a much more subtle, softer look. It's a post-process, by the way, and you can see the results immediately. You can save whichever you like best, or save both. I'm going to save both. I click save and save as render 1, then switch back to sharper details, and I'll save this as render 2. This brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you like the 2023 version with the new render engine. Use it to create even more beautiful visual designs in your work. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Have a nice day. Bye.